Hey guys, um, had a question about compressors, about the compressor failures. So one of the things that a lot of guys say is the compressor burned out. Well, when the compressor, you say the compressor burned out, what does that mean? What exactly are we talking about there? We always say, you know, the, that unit had a burnout or that, you know, compressor burned out or whatever. But we need to make sure we understand what all of this means because if you are a supervisor or you're going to become a supervisor and the guys are coming to you and they're saying, you know, it had a short, it had a burnout, it had this, it had that, you should know what exactly is that's going on with it so that you can correct the problem. Because what happens when you just change a compressor, you know, take the old compressor out, put a new one in and don't do anything else? Well, within a few days, weeks, months, maybe a year or two, that compressor is going to fail again. Well, there's got to be a reason why they failed. A lot of times people say, well, you know, that's a cheap unit, so it won't la will not last that long. Well, there are a few manufacturers out there that make air conditioning systems. And one of the things that I tell everybody is it's the installation that makes a big difference. The mechanic that is installing it, if they do a good job, with the installation, that unit will most likely last a long time. So now we have to worry about that. And, you know, it's, it's good customer service. If you work in a building and things are not done right, what's going to happen? The equipment is going to keep breaking down. And then they're going to keep calling you. And that's going to create problems and so on. So we need to make sure that we understand what some of these things are. For example, the burnout, like I said. Now, we know that we have the compressor. You know, you're going to have a compressor like this, and this compressor, let's say, for example, is like this, and the question is, what is inside? Well, first of all, we're going to have, let's say, the suction, where the gas, refrigerant gas comes in. But in here, what we're going to have is going to be the discharge valves, and there's going to be the suction valves. It's going to be divided. Here, we're going to have the piston, and the piston comes down. Now, this is not exactly how it looks like inside, but let's just say that in here, we're gonna have, we're gonna have the motor. Now, when we look at a motor, when we, t you know, if we were to take this apart and we looked at a motor, what is it that we see? What makes up a motor? Well, it's nothing more than what I have here, and that is a bunch of electrical windings. Power comes in, generates magnetic field, goes around and around, and the piston goes up and down. Now, there's a lot more to it than just that. I'm trying to simplify this. But, you know, just to make it easy for you to understand. Now, we have this motor right here, which is nothing but windings. Now, when we look at the windings, we have, let's say, for example, the wire that comes in like this and it just goes around and around and around like this. Now, if we think about it, here, I'm just making this number up, let's say that we have 100 feet of, uh, of wire right here, 100 feet. But it's all coiled up. Because it's coiled up, it's just in a small space, in a small area. This wire, what happens is, it's not just plain wire, but it actually has insulation. So in other words, here, all around this wire, what we're gonna have is insulation throughout the entire, the entire wire. So if we were to actually look at this, what we would see is we would see the insulation and then inside, we would see the actual copper wire. When we are looking, when we're looking at a motor, we're looking at a coil of some kind, what we're looking at is not the wire. What we're looking at is the actual insulation. That insulation is lacquer, it's varnish. So what that means is that it's just a very, very thin layer. And if we break it off, what's gonna happen? Then the wire is gonna be exposed. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if you take a motor and you were to cut it with 
you know, a sharp saw or whatever, you would end up with something like this. When you looked at the end of it, when you looked at the end of the windings, what would happen is you would see this. You would see all of the actual copper wire inside and outside you would have the insulation. Now, once this insulation is broken like that, these two wires are going to make contact. So what that means is that this wire is supposed to be up here or this coil, but instead it is touching this one here. So we bypassed all of that resistance right there. Because we bypassed that resistance, now electricity comes here. Instead of going through and generating a magnetic field, electricity is lazy. Because it's lazy, what it's going to do is going to come here like this, and then it's going to jump to here and go through here. Well, if it's not doing the work here, what happens is you have less resistance. Because you have less resistance, now you can have more flow. When you have more flow, you end up with more amperage. One of the things that I always tell everybody in class, when the amperage goes up, two things increase. One is the strength of the magnetic field, and the other one is the amount of heat. So the strength of the magnetic field here, yes, it's going to increase, but the main thing I want to focus on is the amount of heat. Because this varnish that's here, what's going to do, it's, it's going to start to break down because of the heat. Because of that heat, this right here is going to touch, which means that now this one is touching down to here. So we bypass another part of it, generates more heat. Now these two are going to touch. It's generating more heat than these two, these two, these two. And what's happening, now you're generating more heat because you're generating more heat. Now the varnish is melting or is breaking down much easier. And then once you have so much heat in there, that's when you end up with a compressor burnout. A compressor burnout has nothing to do with a piston, with the bearings and, and all that other stuff. A compressor burnout is because your actual motor burned up. Now, let me explain something. We do have bearings in here. If we have a bearing here and that bearing ceases, that bearing stops, that piston is not rotating or the scroll is not rotating or whatever inside is not rotating, it's going to lock up the shaft. Now you're going to draw what they call lock rotor amps, which means that the amperage is going to be very, very high. You're looking at, it depends on the size of the motor, you're looking at 70, 80, 90, 100 amps when it should only be, let's say, 15, 20 amps. The amperage shoots up high. Because it shoots up high, the heat melts all of this, and all of that it makes the motor burn up. Now you have a burnout. Now you have a burnout. Now there's another thing that could cause a burnout, and that is acid. This is one thing that we talk about in class. And I don't like using this example, but acid is just like cancer. When someone gets cancer, what does cancer do? It eats you up from the inside. Eats you up and it just grows. It keeps multiplying and multiplying. If you have surgery or if someone has surgery that has had cancer, they t try taking it all out, but if they leave one little tiny bit, what's going to happen? It's going to grow, it's going to multiply, and it's going to be even worse than before. You come here. This has acid in it. You take the compressor out, you put a new compressor in, and you did not flush the lines. You didn't clean the rest of the system. You didn't replace the dryers. You didn't do all of these things you were supposed to do. What's going to happen? That acid that's out there in the system is going to come back. It's going to eat up the varnish. It's going to destroy that lacquer that's insulating this. So now these are going to connect. Once they connect, what's going to happen? It's going to burn up again. Think about this. How many times have you replaced a compressor and a few weeks later, a few months later, next year, you have to come back and replace it again? Why? Well, simply because we did not figure out what caused it to go bad to begin with. 
One of the questions that I always ask in class, and this is usually a test question, what is the most important thing you can do when you replace a compressor? The correct answer for me in my class is to find the reason for the failure. You have to find out what caused it to fail. Because if you don't, what's going to happen? It's going to go bad again. The new compressor, it's going to go bad. So again, a burnout. A burnout is basically when the motor overheats, the lacquer breaks down, and you start bypassing different sections of the compressor windings, and then your compressor burns up. That's a burnout. If your bearings lock up, that can cause a burnout. So you need to figure out, you need to find out the reason for the failure. Now, uh, I hope this helped. Uh, I was trying to help out, you know, about what happens when you have a burnout or what can cause a burnout. There are several reasons, but remember, you need to find out what caused that compressor to fail before you replace, before you just walk away from the unit. Again, my name is Julio, Aircon Academy. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, subscribe to my page here on YouTube, and if you have any suggestions, please send them to me, and I'll see what I can do about getting a video online for you. Thank you.
this does not matter. 